next uh, presentation up and you're finding your seats. I also wanted to remind you that uh, at 6.30 this evening, there are cocktails followed by a banquet at the Omni Hotel. For those of you that are registered for the banquet, it would be a great chance to have some informal discussions this evening as well as at the coffee breaks and lunch. Um, the next pre presentation is by Professor Moran Satyubri from the University of Ottawa. Thanks, Dennis, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, as, as the previous two uh, team leaders have mentioned, I will only be able to touch upon the highlights of many projects that have been conducted over uh, the fourth year of the network. In fact, uh, there is an incredible amount of experimental and analytical data that have been generated, and uh, I will only show you some of the highlights. Um, Theme three consists of five research projects, as you know. The first one is on supplemental testing devices. And the uh, second one is on added stiffness. third one is innovative materials. I'll be discussing these two together because many of the innovative materials are used also to trace, provide added stiffness to existing structures. And then upgrading with seismic isolation, mostly for bridges, will be discussed. And finally, we'll be discussing the seismic upgrading of, of OFCs. In terms of uh, Project 3.1, uh, Professor Christopoulos from the University of Toronto has been leading this effort uh, with Robert Tremblay at the call. And uh, he had developed uh, performance spectra-based design methodology earlier and uh, selected a benchmark steel structure hospital building in Montreal designed in the 1960s. They analyzed and applied this, this procedure to this benchmark building and, and uh, found out that the procedure works quite uh, efficiently and that, in fact, uh, this building uh, can be better using supplemental damping devices commercially available systems. And uh, they are also in the process of developing a performance spectra based or P spectra design methodology that allows comparison of efficiencies of, uh, of various supplemental damping devices with an effort to optimize them for their use. In terms of combined project 3.2 and 3.3, I'll be, I have grouped them as steel structures and reinforced concrete structures, as well as masonry uh, at the end. Um, steel structures, I'll be discussing mostly inelastic fuses introduced to steel bracing systems, uh, and then we'll go into non ductile reinforced concrete and uh, shear wall buildings, and we'll also look at uh, unreinforced masonry reference schemes. The first project was uh, conducted by Colin uh, Roger at McGill University. This involves the development of green fuse device, which does uh, uh, promote inelasticity in the steel bracing system. They tested individual braces as well as X bracing attached to uh, a steel brace uh, specimen at McGill University. At Ecole Polytechnique, uh, uh, Professor Tremblay was leading an effort to develop a fuse for HSS uh, uh, braces. This fuse involves four angles trimmed to the desired, desired cross section to promote yielding at the right time. And uh, testing was done on individual uh, braces with fuses, as you can see on this slide. And in parallel, he has been doing finite element analysis uh, and, and comparison analytical and experimental research results. And he has also extended this into looking into uh, possible imperfections in, in steel braces. Um, one of the industrial partners, uh, Canam Group, had proposed a ductile fuse for I sections and uh, preliminary finite element 
analysis conducted at the Cochrane Technique indicated that these fuses may buckle uh, prematurely and uh, there's research underway to prevent buckling of such fuses and there's uh, a finite element analysis accompanied by experimental And uh, uh, still, when we look at steel breast veins with ductile fuses, uh, the ductile fuse has been proposed consisting of single and double angle bracing members. And a new set of design rules are generated at first of uh, Schoenberg, uh, uh, along with work done in um, the, the research in steel structures extends into improving the ductility of the connections as well. Uh, it, again, Professor uh, Tremblay, uh, along with uh, researchers at Concordia, has been developing uh, steel connections by uh, allowing uh, uh, slotted holes and vessel plates to, uh, to pose yield in the vessel plates. To um, all steel buckling restraint members are being looked at once again at the call. Uh, Professor Tremblay uh, has been working on BRDs, buckling restraint uh, braces, for a long time. And uh, those BRDs that consist of only steel without uh, infilling concrete material uh, was uh, calibrated using California earthquakes and it was realized that it may be too conservative for Canadian seismicity. Now there's work going on to recalibrate using Canadian data. In U4, extensive numerical studies as well as testing will continue at the um, In terms of uh, seismic bracing uh, of steel structures uh, at the University of Toronto, Professor Christopoulos has been testing self-centering bracing systems applied on a steel uh, specimen. They went all the way up to 4% drift without any damage, and, and then they decided to use the same specimen uh, on, on, on their uh, uh, additional testing under static and uh, uh, dynamic elastic load reversals. When we look at uh, reinforced concrete non-ductile frames, there's research currently going on at the University of Ottawa, which involves steel braces attached to non-ductile reinforced concrete frames. And this bracing system consists of HSS sections attached to steel link beams. The beams are attached to beams and columns. The idea is to uh, keep the braces away from uh, the critical non-seismic joints and also promote inelasticity by yielding in the link, link beams and prevent buckling by bending of the link beams. So this system is currently being developed. As you can see on the left hand side, uh, uh, a reference uh, frame that was designed by the 1965 ABCC was damaged and will be currently repaired and retrofitted and there's another uh, companion specimen in the lab already for which is uh, going to be retrofitted uh, as undamaged frame. And uh, another project involves bracing using high strength steel strands, which is uh, supposed to be less intrusive uh, bracing system, and different number of high strength strands and different levels of diagonal crispness is used to be looked at, and the system seems to be efficient Carlton University, David Lau, has been working on use of FRP in retrofitting non ductile shear walls. Uh, earlier uh, tests resulted in development of proper anchoring mechanism because debonding of surface bonded FRP was observed. In the second phase, uh, he has been preparing specimens for testing, covering the entire spectrum of 
uh, aspect ratios of walls anywhere between squat to standard walls and uh, experimental work is currently underway. And he's also conducting finite element analysis and uh, comparing it with his earlier tests as you can see on the slide and he's getting good improvement between the two. In parallel, uh, uh, researchers at the Global Technique has been doing check table testing on reinforced concrete shear walls retrofitted with carbon fibers. And uh, they have been testing two eights per intensity with reinforced concrete shear walls to see effectiveness of this retrofitted scheme. At McGill, um, researchers, uh, Professor Mitchell and his, his team started applying ASC 41 guidelines to uh, Concrete shear walls retrofitted using different schemes by conducting pushover analysis. And each of these pushover analyses are based on models that were calibrated as a result of their tests. In fact, they did do quite extensive testing of FRP uh, as applied to non At the University of Ottawa, Professor Palermo has been researching uh, shape memory alloys. Earlier, he tested the use of SMAs in, in for new construction. Now he's extending that into a retrofit scheme where he connects SMAs to rigid steel links externally to control operations. And uh, the test program is going to work. Professor Palermo also at the University of Ottawa is working on repairing damaged concrete shear walls. Here you see two damaged shear walls on the left is SMA reinforced walls in the middle, dimensional reinforced shear wall. On the right you see a specimen that is being repaired. Uh, in terms of masonry retrofit, there are two uh, projects simultaneously going on at the University of Ottawa. This one that you see was partially reinforced reinforced masonry wall, which has been retrofitted with carbon fiber sheets. These are surface bonded CFRPs for shear control, control of diagonal tension cracks, but we also uh, wanted to improve flexural capacity and hence have to develop FRP anchors to anchor them to concrete uh, footing. We did get limited ductility essentially due to the existing reinforcement in this sample. However, because neither masonry nor FRP uh, are uh, brittle, or sorry, compound materials, there wasn't much activity in the system, but there was a two and a half to three fold increase in, uh, in capacity. So any such retrofit strategy should be based on elastic uh, force studies. And a companion test program is currently under the University of Ottawa. This time, we try to introduce some ductility and this is a, a URM shear wall with steel plate anchors. As you can see, these steel plate anchors uh, are inserted into uh, the, the concrete foundation, which is pre-cut and with epoxy gluing and the reduced cross-section to promote every yielding. The, the high strength steel plates that we use were extremely ductile with up to 20 percent structuring and uh, we completed this test. Not only that, we, we, we got three to four times the uh, uh, times the uh, strength increases compared to something on the different wall, but also uh, quite uh, high ductility. In terms of um, element retrofit schemes as opposed to system level retrofit schemes, which is really based on drift control. Uh, there was a procedure developed uh, based on transverse crisscrossing. The idea was to control diagonal <coughs> cracking even before they apply by, by inducing active pressure in transverse direction, confine concrete with active as well as passive pressure, and also improve bond between uh, uh, steel and concrete in the uh, splice region. And uh, this research was taken to phase two uh, in order to resolve some of the practical difficulties as 
associated with human problems. There's no problem wrapping these physics strands around rich columns or in large diameter, but there were problems doing the same with smaller size building columns. And currently there's research program on the way to see if a packaging straps, high strength packaging straps, with handheld device can be pre-stressed in the same uh, uh, positive features uh, can be achieved. In fact, we were able to pre-stress these trends up to 230 MPA with this pneumatic device and test it will be done in the next few weeks. At Ecole Polytechnique, under the leadership of Professor Nassikot, there is an uh, extensive research program underway. He has been using ultra-high performance fiber reinforced concrete jacketing to strengthen bridge piers. And uh, he has uh, obtained extensive data and uh, essentially concentrated on splice regions now uh, of uh, older bridge piers. And uh, the data looks promising and the material seems to create wonders as I uh, visited their labs and myself. Um, if we look at uh, isolating bridges under project 3.4. Uh, a number of different design procedures are currently being developed. Uh, design methods for isolated bridges uh, were, were developed uh, uh, by Professor Bergeron at Sherbrooke, and he looked at the application of different uh, isolation systems, elastomeric bearings, uh, with all the valves, thread core, pendulum bearings, and friction uh, bearings, viscous dampers. We all looked at an effort to select whichever would suit to what kind of structure, uh, and uh, we looked at combined use of these isolated uh, bearing options. And uh, as they call Polytechnique, Najib Tohani is leading an effort to develop displacement design of isolated bridges and seismic displacement demands in eastern and western Canada are being established and the work has been extended to 3D modeling of bridges as you see on this slide uh, there's quite a bit of analytical work that is being conducted in an effort to come up with a sound design methodology for base isolation. Also, uh, in collaboration of uh, the University of Toronto and Ecole Technique Research. Thank you very much, Murat. Um, as you might, might have heard, the wagons outside, the coffee is arriving. You can probably smell the coffee by now. It was lost. That's why you found Was he lost? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. Um, we have, uh, right now, in a few minutes, we'll start our coffee break, and this is a very valuable time to have informal discussions amongst the researchers and the uh, graduate students. Every time you see a professor's name on the screen, we know there's graduate students behind all of this research. And in our annual report, of course, we're giving all of the publications that you produced uh, with us. And we're very proud of the output and the efforts that you've all made towards the success of this network. Um, I should point out that the graduate student conference is going to be held in, in two rooms. In this room, it will be Dr. Payam Tehrani. Payam is right here. Um, so if you need to load up presentations, please see Dr. Tehrani. And at the back of the room is Dr. Bill Cook, who will be in room 280 right next door here. So depending on which room you're in, as you can see in the schedule, uh, you can also load up your presentations with uh, Dr. Cook. Um, also, this is the time for those of you that haven't done it already to put your posters out because we could take a glance at the poster during coffee and look in more detail at the posters uh, during the lunch break. So I think, uh, and, and for the researchers, we'll start up on the fourth floor, room 497 at 10.30, and the graduate student seminars start in this room and the next room at 10.30 as well. So this will give us a little bit of a longer chance to, to chat. So we'll break the coffee.